Welcome everyone. Today we will be chatting with an eyewitness to an unprovoked attack on the Thai island of Koh Tao. Uh, welcome to the channel, Carla Bartel. Thank you, Ian. Uh, now, I'll just give you a little bit of a background about Carla. She's actually the second of two people that I uh, will be speaking with about an attack uh, that she uh, was a, a witness to, and uh, you may also say that she was a victim of, the other person being Sam Venning. And I've already posted his interview on YouTube, uh, and I'll have a link below uh, in the description. So if you haven't already seen that, after watching this video, you might want to uh, check out uh, Sam's interview. Now, um, just to give you a little bit of a background about uh, Carla, uh, Carla uh, comes from Canada. She's actually in a small town right now called uh, Verdon in Manitoba in Canada. Uh, she is about to turn 28 years of age in June. And back on July of 2013, she was uh, just 20 years old. And she'd traveled to uh, Thailand with her sister, uh, her older sister and with a friend whose name uh, is Ashley Burke. And um, they'd been traveling around uh, Thailand for just a, a brief period and then found themselves on Koh Tao. And uh, amongst other things, uh, Carla has got a degree in criminology and uh, she works as a project manager. Now, does all of that sound uh, correct, Carla? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Yep. Okay, thanks. That just gives us a bit of an intro to who you are. So um, back on the 21st of March this year, 2020, uh, Carla reached out to me because she stumbled across my uh, Facebook page, which is called Koh Tao Death Island. And uh, she said that she had a near death experience that um, she felt that she really needed to share uh, because it was eerily similar to the manner in which uh, Hannah and David uh, had died. Um, you can confirm that that's correct, uh, Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I'll, I'll start handing it over to you shortly, Carla. Uh, okay. So back in uh, 2013, uh, you head off to um, uh, to Thailand with uh, with Ashley and with your older sister, and um, you've uh, you went to a couple of different islands and then found yourselves on Koh Tao. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, we flew into Bangkok and we traveled around the around the islands from what I can remember and okay. made it back to Bangkok and flew up. So okay, and uh, this will become important later in the interview. Uh, mm -hmm. On one of the other islands, you uh, bumped into another um, tourist from Britain, and his name was Sam Venning. Is that correct? Yes, that's yeah. correct. Okay, so then. Uh, you find your way onto uh, Koh Tao, which would have been sometime in July 2013. Yeah. Yep. And um, you did, and what were the sorts of activities you pursued on Koh Tao? Uh, well, I always heard it was like one of the cheap, cheapest places in the world to get yep. uh, your diving certification. Yes. So yes. that was the major reason going to Koh Tao. And that's exactly what we did when we got there. Yep. Um, yeah, so we got our diving certifications and um, I met Sam, I think on another island yes. in Thailand somewhere. And uh, he ended up being on our diving boat again, which was okay. a yep. coincidence, but yep. yeah. You just cross paths again. Okay, yeah. and um, okay, so if we move forward to, um, we think it was the 28th of July. Um, yeah. I understand that you and Sam were happened to both be drinking with other people in the Fishbowl Beach Bar on Sari Beach. Is, is that right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And then uh, later in the evening or you know, towards the end of the evening when it was getting late and uh, places were closing down, uh, the two of you uh, went for a walk together down uh, the strip between uh, a set of shops that run parallel with uh, Sairi Beach? Yep. Does that sound right? Yep. Okay. And so um, you uh, you then got to the um, the very southern end of uh, Sairi Beach, you were saying, and uh, there was a, a place there with a, a little bridge and it um, was basically uh, very, very close to the spot where uh, David, 
Miller and Hannah uh, Witheridge's bodies were found a bit over a year later. Um, that's what you were telling me before. Can you can confirm that that's correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah. yeah, quite shockingly, the exact same place where yep. their bodies yep. were found. Yep. So. Yep. Actually, uh, very in interestingly, I'll just cut in here. I'll just um, uh, interrupt for a moment if I can. Uh, it yep. was really interesting that uh, there is a fellow by the name of James Isaacs from Bournemouth in England who reported that the 24 hours before Hannah and David were murdered, um, four of his uh, friends, uh, sorry, two of his friends who were uh, female uh, travellers had actually been mugged at the very same spot where you were attacked. Um, they were uh, mugged by uh, four um, Thai sort of motorcycle gang members or four uh, Thai guys who were on two motorcycles. And uh, that was reported in both the Bangkok Post on uh, the, the Sunday after um, Hannah and David's murders. And it was also published in the, the uh, English paper called The Telegraph. And I'll have links to those articles below. Um, but it just sort of shows that the attack on Carla and uh, on Sam was actually one of three that uh, we know about. And it's probably just the, the tip of the iceberg. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop interrupting now uh, for a moment. Yeah. So uh, you were you were there on um, uh, apparently you the, the two of you basically sat down um, on a wall with your feet dangling over the wall and below you uh, you just sort of described it as a bit of a creek area, but it's an area where the uh, water runs off from um, from the uh, from the ocean. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And um, how close was the spot you were sitting to um, the site where a year later people were putting flowers down uh, in commemoration of David and Hannah? Well, exactly. Pretty much where those flowers were all yep. laid down. Uh, yep. You were sitting like right there, like yep. probably like a meter from there. So yeah, yeah. Between, oh. that, between that rock and where the bridge was yep. that yep. went over that. So yeah, you're just a matter of feet or a matter of meters away from where those flowers were. And so where you were sitting down there, you were uh, sitting down and uh, facing north towards Ben's diving resort, just as a yeah. point of reference. Okay, yeah. well, uh, can you tell the viewers um, uh, what happened uh, while you were sitting down there chatting with, um, with Sam? Yeah, for sure. Um, so it was quite dark in the area. That was yes. one of the Yep. biggest things that like stood out for me because everything is like hustle bustle there there's yes. bars yep. everywhere and this was just a little area it was quite nice like a pretty place to sit so I yes. thought yes and <laughs> um, yeah we were just chatting and honestly I remember kind of getting a bad feeling like I'm I'm a, a little bit afraid of the dark as it is but yep. I was just I remember saying to Sam like hey, like, I think we should maybe head back now. And yeah. he's like, oh, no, like, it's fine. Like, yeah. don't worry, whatever. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, and I mean, not very long after, I heard a scuffle of flip-flops, like, yes. right, like, right there. Like, it was like two seconds of that noise. And yes. I jumped down and looked back. Yes. And right there, there was two men that I can remember yep. having passed on because I don't remember seeing their faces at all. Like I'm yes. almost certain. Yep. What I described at the time uh, was like those anonymous, like V for Vendetta masks. That's kind of okay. how I described it, but it was like a split second. Yes. And I, I just took off running. Like I jumped down in that little runoff area where it's sandy. Yes, yes. And I and under the bridge towards the main path and I was just yes. like hys hysterically screaming and like yes. help help like somebody help me and like yep. I, I didn't look back I was in my head I was like certain that I was being chased that's yes. what I assumed yep. at the time and I didn't have time to look back like yep. so I crawled out of that little creek area and there was yes. a what I could only describe as like a white man yes on a path 
on the path and I was just like help like somebody help me and like yep. like I said I don't know where my friend Sam is and I'm just he probably thought like who is this crazy lady just yelling yes. at me crying yeah. Yeah. but um yeah and Sam ran up like a couple seconds later and he had blood like rushing down his face and, like he had been hit with a rock yeah. and um, like pretty much as soon as, as Sam came up like these two uh what I can only describe as like what I thought was Asian men took off mm. on a motorbike towards the direction of vans mm. on uh on the path yeah. um but yeah. yeah I mean and then this guy we met on the path like I don't even remember him saying anything to us like I don't yes. remember like I don't even I couldn't even tell you if he spoke English to be honest like, yes I think he he pretty much kept walking as soon as Sam appeared uh, but yeah yeah and I mean at the time as soon as I heard you know the scuffle of feet I'm like oh my sister and my friend like found us and they're you know kind of playing oh, okay. a joke yeah yeah you thought they were playing a joke yeah. yeah like you know but yeah and but one thing that um struck me just hearing uh sam's uh, yes. recollection of it is he apparently saw a like the light of the motorbike and somebody actually enter the park yes and i don't that's something I didn't notice yeah. <laughs> at the time. So I really, like, I thought we were alone the whole time yeah. in the park. And well, so, it's well, it's not yeah. unusual for two witnesses in the same situation to notice different things. One of you can be looking one direction, the other one's looking in a different direction. You know, um, so that's not at yeah. all unusual, especially if it's dark um, yeah. and you're concentrating on different things. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, um, you said that you saw... Uh, two Asian looking men uh, on the motorbike uh, heading off towards uh, bands. What makes you say that they were Asian or suspect that they were Asian? Uh, they both had black hair and brown skin from what I could describe. They yep. definitely were white men. Okay. Um, and that's something I remember. I never was able to actually look at their face. Yep. But okay. I did see them on the motorbike quite close. Yep. taking off yeah so yeah okay and um uh we've you spoke about uh, your sam came up uh, a few seconds later um mm -hmm. was that a, a few seconds after you uh came to the um uh, after you were talking with the white guy or was it a few seconds after you first ran off uh a few seconds after talking to the to that guy on the path yeah, yeah. the white okay. guy yeah but yeah. um i mean the whole thing it's so hard to tell time yes. from something like that it but is. that whole thing was so quick like yep. from the, the scuffle of the flip-flops it's not like they were running from some distance yep. they were yep. like close mm. to us yep. from behind us because they yes. made it like right behind me in like a couple seconds yeah and yeah by the time i ran off like it just yep. yeah sam yep. was maybe knocked out for like yeah a couple minutes maybe i just i i remember having that panic of like yep. i don't know what happened to him yep. like yeah and i see this guy on the path like like you need to help me i like i don't know where he is i don't know if he's okay yep. like yeah yeah so um uh i mean it's very difficult to tell with things like time as, as you said but uh, from the time that uh, the Sam was hit uh, in the head with the rock uh, to the time that Sam joined you as you were trying to talk to the uh, white fellow, um, yeah. would you know roughly how much time had elapsed? Um, you know, was it a, a question of a minute or was it minutes? Uh, it definitely couldn't have been more than five minutes. I know yep. I didn't have a very long I wouldn't even call it a conversation, but I yep. didn't have a long chat with this guy that was on the path. It was because <laughs> you're the only like, one talking. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, fair yeah. enough. Okay. One minute, two minutes. Yeah. 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 Well, well, no, nothing really turns on that, but uh, there were, uh, as I said to you before, we have a lot of trolls who watch this channel and mm -hmm. uh, they are very keen to pick holes in anything that anyone says. 
So if yeah. uh, there's a discussion of a, it was a, a few seconds or a minute, um, people will uh, often try to say, well, what was it? Was it a few seconds or was it a minute? But I think that yeah. uh, we can both agree that uh, judging exact times is uh, often difficult in these sorts of highly charged situations. So, okay, um, uh, that, that's what happened then. And then uh, did you uh, get to speak with Sam for very long after he joined you? Well, uh, we both left on a motorbike very oh. slowly back down the path towards bands. Like I was staying somewhere past bands, like yep. right off the path. Yep. And I just remember like, it, it's it was so weird because I don't remember us like speeding off as you might think you would like after something like that but we are driving slowly like I don't I don't I don't even know if we said a word to each other and then yeah. Yeah. I was like still pretty hysterical and like crying and yeah. we made it back to where I was staying and yeah. Yeah. um I just remember my friend Ashley was outside yeah. and like was okay. like what happened and I told her everything that went down yeah okay and, well before we yeah. talk about Ashley a bit I just thought I'll, I'll interrupt briefly again and yeah. uh, that, that is just to say that uh, you know in the interview which I had with Sam uh, he was you know quite convinced that uh, you being so alert and uh, you know hearing the flip-flops and uh, you know jumping down and running and screaming uh, that uh, that you uh, almost invariably saved uh, both him and yourself from something that could have been much worse. So um, I've actually described you uh, a little bit tongue in cheek as being um, an accidental heroine. Um, so it's not every day I get to speak with a heroine, but um, I, I mean, I did save a, a lady from drowning once when I was 18 years of age, but I only saved one person. Uh, but you, you were uh, clever enough to save two on the one evening and you probably weren't even planning to do it. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, so look, no, congratulations for that. Uh, you know, all credit to you. There'd be a lot of girls who would just freeze in a situation such as the one you, you were in, but you had the good sense. And, um, you know, I think, as you said, you know, adrenaline kicked in and it was just your, uh, flight reflex. Um, but you know, uh, if you'd been a bit drunk or whatever, um, you probably wouldn't have made it away. Um, you know, whether you would have been, uh, robbed or whether you would have been raped or um or something like that whether you would have wound up like hannah and david who knows but um obviously these two people weren't there to um to be friends with you um so look uh, look sorry for interrupting but uh, i just wanted to say congratulations for for that part of what you've done but you've done some um, good things since then as well in relation to that attack um but you were telling me about uh, how when you got back to your room you saw your friend uh, Ashley uh, and you had a conversation with her yes yeah yeah so I I was hysterical then too yep. and, uh, she was able to comfort me yep. and um, yeah that's when like my sister was there too my sister was quite upset that yes. she couldn't find us I guess yep. so I wasn't able to tell her yep. exactly what happened that night but she knew something that had happened yes and um yeah that night honestly was probably like one of like the worst nights of my life like even after the incident because yes i remember even even going back back, back towards bands on that path yes because, because that's the direction that the assailants took off yes to yes towards. Yeah. like i i just couldn't help but think like are they are they Waiting. watching it? are yeah. they gonna see where we go are they gonna mm. are they gonna see where i'm staying like yes. we're in we're in like not not really a hotel where you can walk in and then mm. your room is in there we had our own like cabin type place so yes. the door is like right outside so yes. every time i heard a motorcycle go by like yeah. i was i was afraid they were gonna come back honestly yeah, but yeah. Well, yeah. They <laughs> it's, a, it's a very rational fear too. Um, yeah. But yeah, you were. I think you were saying that you were sort of sharing a cabin or a room with uh, the other two girls. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then um, uh, you mentioned that uh, you thought that the attack 
probably happened a little bit after midnight. And uh, yeah. the, uh, the three of you, um, after this attack, you decided that you would be leaving uh, Koh Tao as soon as possible. And you basically left um, lunchtime, you know, like you know, within 12 hours or so of the, uh, the attack. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, yeah. I know we took like the first boat we could get off yeah. that island. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did not yeah. feel safe there at all. Like I know that that area is that area on the island is pretty small. Yes. And I yeah, I didn't feel safe spending another night there going out to a like anywhere going yeah. out to a restaurant having a drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, actually, that's a very common story of people leaving the uh, island abruptly, you know, whether they've cut their vacation short. And even uh, people who've had businesses on the island, you know, they will be threatened by the Kotao Mafia or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, they just leave everything they've got and, um, and, uh, and disappear without, uh, without fanfare and without telling everyone. They just get away as quietly as they can. So it's a yeah. very common story, just as it's a common story that um, uh, grieving relatives go to the island looking for answers. It's just, uh, it's like a broken record. But um, okay, so uh, I understand that uh, you sent me a, um, a screenshot of a, a Facebook post that you um, made on the 29th of July in which you basically said by Kotao, and that was the 29th of July, and you think that uh, that was the same day or the, the same morning of the attack. Is that right? Yes, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. What I can remember. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So with, without being certain, uh, we think that the attack occurred just after midnight um, on the morning of the 29th of July, 2013. Okay, so then you... Uh, uh, obviously, you left um, Koh Tao, and I think a few days later, you actually, uh, in early August, you actually uh, left Thailand altogether and went back to uh, Manitoba, and you were living in Winnipeg at that time? Yes, yeah. yeah. I was living with my parents at that time, actually. Yeah. And uh, initially, you didn't say much to your dad about what had happened, um, but you confided in a lot of your close friends. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I didn't have the heart to tell my dad what yeah. happened. Yeah. It's such a, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. So if we fast forward now to the 15th of September, 2014, mm -hmm. which was the morning that David Miller's body and Hannah Witheridge's bodies were found having been bludgeoned to death on Syrie beach. Um, tell us about uh, how you learned of uh, their murders. Uh, so, Someone I went to high school with, I think it was an old friend or something, yeah. sent the article to me on Facebook and said, I think you should see this. Mm. And I opened it up. And of course, there was that exact same area that I had been in. So mm. like, or what I thought when I looked at the article, mm. I was unsure when I first saw it, but I was just like, I just had a full like body reaction. Mm. Like I was shaking, I was in complete shock. And like, mm. yeah, that really hit me hard. Cause I think at that time I realized how lucky we both were to make it out of that alive. Cause yep. the similarities between what happened to Hannah and David and what happened to us were just yep. almost too much, like too much in common to be a coincidence. So yeah. Yep. Although I suppose that um, if we look at what happened with David and Hannah and we look at what happened with um, those two girls the night before David and Hannah were murdered, uh, there were four assailants who uh, uh, reportedly attacked the, uh, the two girls. And uh, we don't really know how many assailants, although it looks like there were many assailants who attacked uh, Hannah and David just by the number of wounds and the different types of wounds on David's body mm -hmm. from different weapons. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's nothing to say for sure that the two people who attacked uh, you and Sam uh, were amongst the four who attacked um, the other uh, two girls or uh, were amongst the people who attacked um, Hannah and David. 
Um, but they could be, and I guess on an island like Koh Tao, uh, all of the local thugs and all of the local criminals know the best spots to attack people. And mm -hmm. um, if it's a dark little spot, um, you know, they'd all be passing on information to each other. And uh, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, it's you know, perhaps just the tip of the iceberg of attacks in that um, particular location. Um, but uh, you, I think you were also saying before that uh, the two fellows who you saw riding off on the motorbike, they appeared to be of like about average size and um, perhaps were not as tiny as the two Burmese guys who were later scapegoated. Um, over the murders of Hannah and David, because those two guys were, you know, only one of them was only five feet tall, the other one's a little under five feet tall. So does that sound right about the size of the guys? Yeah, and I mean, I can't be a hundred percent certain on yep. height, but I'm I'm a fairly tall person. I'm yes. five nine, and okay, I know they definitely looked like full grown men yep. that took yep. off on the motorbike. So yep. they didn't look like young boys or young yep kids you know so. yes yep yep okay well thanks for that okay so um uh you learned about the uh attack through one of your friends and then mm -hmm. um uh you had a i think that you had a bit of an email exchange or not an email exchange but you had an exchange of messages on facebook with uh sam venning you contacted him is that correct yeah yeah. yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. And I think that have you got a printout of your um the screenshot there in front of you? Then perhaps you can read uh, through not, that. Not with uh not with Sam. I don't have the printout with Sam. Oh, okay. Oh well, I, yeah. I think I had that, but um <laughs> not not to worry. Okay. Um in fact I in my interview with Sam, I actually put it um up on the screen uh the conversation. Mm -hmm there okay uh, so but you had a bit, little bit of a conversation in which you basically both said that you were extremely lucky and you used yeah. a little bit of colorful language or one of you did anyway um yeah. from what i remember um which is understandable and then um you apparently got in touch with the foreign and commonwealth office and you've shown me some uh emails that you sent to them and they sent to you um is that yeah, correct that, yes Okay, well, um, so would you like to read through those uh, uh, emails for the uh, viewers, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, so this was on uh, September 17th, 2014. Uh, so I wrote- two, day, two days after the murder. Yes. Yep. Uh, so I wrote, hello, my name is Carla Bartel from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I'm 21 years old. I was in Thailand July 12th, 2013 to August 3rd, 2013. A friend sent me an article two days ago about the deaths of Hannah Witheridge and David Miller in Koh Tao, Thailand. Reading through, I was overcome with absolute terror and disbelief, not only because of the gruesome details, but because I was attacked in the exact location where these bodies were found. I went to Thailand with my sister and my friend Ashley. We spent the end of our trip on Koh Tao Island to receive our diving certifications around July 27th. And there I met um, an English guy named Sam, whom, whom I had met on other islands on the trip. Once our diving certifications were complete, there was an after party at the bar restaurant uh, acro exactly across from Bounds Resort uh, front office. So now we know like the fishbowl. Mm. Um, we had we had a few drinks, watched the fire show, and walked down the beach, and soon after we went back to the main path in which we kept walking down towards um, this little creek uh, ocean runoff. Um, I, I put creek type place, but we now know it's an ocean runoff. Um, we found near the ocean. It was a lot darker there, but we had sat at the edge of the rocky creek close to the little walkway bridge that is there. And we were, we were talking in the dark for a good amount of time. Uh, we were facing in the direction of where Ben's diving is down the path. We were still chatting and I heard footsteps running up in seconds. And my immediate reaction was to jump down into that creek area. I thought maybe some friends were joking around and sneaking up on us. As I looked back, there were two men in masks 
that I can only describe as V for Vendetta mass or something similar, but I could be wrong. I started jolting towards the main path, screaming and crying for help and absolutely hysterical as to what was going on. I reached a white man on the path that I was begging for help. As I did, Sam ran up behind me about a minute later with blood gushing down his face. He had a rock smashed across the side of his head as though they were trying to knock us out. Um, I believe each one was trying to knock us out, but I had heard footsteps and ju jumped down before anything could happen. Could happen. As Sam ran up, we could both see two brown men, um, believably in shorts, speeding off on a motorbike towards the direction of the band's diving resort. I was so distraught and scared, and I didn't bother to tell police because I didn't think they could do anything. I left the island right away the next morning. Um, I strongly believe that this could be more than a mere coincidence and I hope it could potentially help you with the investigation. If you have any more questions, I put my contact. Yep, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, so that was a, an email you sent to the British Foreign and Commonwealth Office. And um, yeah. shortly afterwards, you got a response from, um, I think it was John King of that office. Yes, yeah. Uh, actually, it was um, uh, yeah. I believe actually it was a a woman sent back that she'll forward the information to the embassy in Bangkok, and which they did. And then John King, John King uh, got back to me from okay. the embassy. Yep. And um, do you have, do you have a printout of um, the? Uh, the email that John King sent you? Yes, I do, yeah. We'd like to read that for the uh, viewers, please. Yeah, uh, so uh, he wrote, hello, Carla, thank you very much for getting in contact. I would like to pass your information to the Royal, Royal Thai police who are investigating the case concerning David Miller and Hannah Witheridge. Before I do, can I just ask a few questions? Um, are you content with are you content for your experiences in July slash August 2013 in Koh Tao to be relayed to the Royal Thai Police? Uh, are you content to be identified to the Royal Thai Police as one of the intended victims of this attack? Do you know anyone or any more about Sam, for example, a surname or where he was from in the UK? Did Sam seek medical treatment? Did he leave the island with you? Obviously, we would like to trace him. Do you have any more details of the white man you met on the path? Thanks again for getting in contact and I hope to hear from you soon. But that's the last I've really heard from anyone about that. Okay. But <laughs> I did you, reply, yeah. yeah, I did answer all those questions. Yeah. And, yeah. and do you have your reply there as well? Uh, I actually don't have my reply. I had a lot of emails that were deleted. So okay. my, my and well, emails are, well, well, emails. well, actually, you, you sent the reply to me, so... Oh, okay. Oh, well, it's probably an old screenshot then. Yeah, it was a... Well, it was a screenshot. Um, I'll just see if I can find it right now. But in the reply, you... Uh, in the reply, you did say that... Um, uh, Sam's name was Sam Benning. And yes. you also said that you didn't know anything else about the uh, white man you met on the path. And that was basically mm -hmm. it. So I could I could find it, but uh, I won't waste up the time of the viewers at the moment. So that was the gist of it. And you then, uh, I understand you basically didn't hear from anybody else. Uh, no, no, I didn't hear anything else. So you assumed and that you assumed you'd given permission for it to be uh, forwarded on to the Kotau police. And um, yes. so we assume that that's what the British and Commonwealth Office did. And then uh, you heard nothing further. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And at the time, at the time with the information that I had, yep. um, I did everything that I thought I could do to yep. help out. Yeah. Yep. But you didn't contact any journalists in Canada or in Britain about uh, your experience? No, uh, to be honest, at the time, I felt, I felt as though that would be a little bit self-serving and disrespectful yep. considering 
what okay. happened to you, yep. uh, Hannah yep. and David. Um, okay. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. yeah, sorry, to me, my information was in the right place yep. and I didn't need to make yep. a big yes, media so it, 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 about it. Yeah. It was in the right place. Uh, I mean, uh, I suppose some of my own comments about that is, look, you've done um, a lot of things very well. Initially, you obviously saved uh, yourself and you saved Sam from a fate that could have been much worse than uh, a, a simple bruise on the head with uh, some blood gushing down. Um, but uh, in respect to, uh, with respect to the Thai police, um, I think that there's an interesting use of language because the Thai police will often say that they're investigating a crime. But in fact, what we um, find as observers, people who observe the Thai police a lot, uh, will say that the investigation is not actually an investigation, it's a cover-up. And uh, quite often they may know who the perpetrators are, but they want to cover up uh, the crimes committed by the true perpetrators who may have given them bribes, and uh, they will uh, find scapegoats. And scapegoating is very much a part of Thai culture. In fact, in one of my other videos, and I can put a link below to this, uh, I include... Uh, part of a talk by a fellow by the name of uh, David Streckfuss at the Foreign Correspondence Club of Thailand, where he points out the extraordinarily high uh, conviction rates when people are um, charged by the police of a crime. And uh, overall, the, the conviction rates in the year that he was looking at, they were running at about 99%. So in a situation like that, you have to really ask yourself, do we actually have a legal system uh, it's not really a legal system as we in the West understand it uh, for lawyers who've studied jurisprudence as part of their law degrees. You know, they will uh, tell you that uh, you know, law is, in, in very broad terms, a set of rules that a legitimate authority will enforce. And what we find in Thailand is that the legitimate authority, it isn't really the courts who are enforcing the law. It is um, or enforcing anything like a law. Uh, because they just act as a rubber stamp and it's actually the police who decide who's guilty and who's not. And um, in the Bangkok Post article that will be included below, or I will have a, a Bangkok Post article included in the description below, um, there's a discussion about the way uh, in Thailand the, the Thai police just decide on who the uh, culprit is and then they extract confessions, uh, often under torture or duress, and uh, that's the way um, everything works here. So it's very, very different to the way the law works in Britain or Canada or Australia or New Zealand or um, really uh, any sort of relatively civilised country. I'm not saying that some people aren't stitched up in these countries with uh, bogus police evidence, but it's just very much um, that's just kind of standard operating procedure uh, amongst the Thai police. And as far as the for Foreign and Commonwealth Office goes, um, I think that in the world of international diplomacy, um, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office has a conflict of interest because they want to stay uh, on good terms with the Thai authorities and they want to stay on good terms with other countries as well. And so sometimes uh, if they withhold information from the general public, if they withhold it from victims of crime or families of victims of crime, that's just the price they pay because there is a conflict of interest. And um, sometimes um, if uh, tourists, if British tourists die, that is just um, collateral damage and they're prepared to wear that uh, because the national interest is so much greater. And uh, so, you know, if we have a situation where say the Miller family or the Witheridge family are, are seeking answers, um, if there's someone like Ambassador Kent, who was the, the British ambassador at the time, he's not going to turn around and tell them, hey, look, you know, Koh Tao is um, a cesspool of um, uh, Thai psychopaths who have been descended from Thai pirates. And uh, we can't believe anything the Thai police tell us. And we know lots of other murders and crimes. He's not going to do that. And um, he shouldn't do that. And if I were in his yeah. position, I would not be um, bending over backwards to reveal the truth to uh, citizens of my own country because um, uh, yeah, there is a higher interest, which is the national interest. But look, on that note, um, I think we uh, 
can probably be uh, closing soon. So thank you so much, Carla, for coming forward to, I mean, thank you again on behalf of Sam for, for saving Sam. He's terribly grateful to you and uh, I understand he's very wealthy. So maybe he should um, flick a million dollars your way. He'll probably be watching, <laughs> he'll, he'll probably be watching this. So um, he might chuckle at that, but um, uh, you've done him a great service and his family a great service by saving him and by saving yourself by being quick witted. And look, you know, you did the right thing by contacting the, um, the, uh, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. And I think that even a year ago, you contacted a Facebook group that is uh, trying to help the um, Burmese guys who were scapegoated for the murders of David and mm -hmm. Hannah. And that's eventually how you, you found me. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, was there anything else that you wanted to add to our little uh, chat today? Uh, yeah, I was actually just going to add, um, like, I know so much more about that island than yes. I, I did before. And I know when I first heard that the DNA of yes. two people were found in Hannah and it was a match to these uh, Burmese young men. Yeah. Honestly, like that was some closure for me. Like I was like, oh, well, that's the end of that. But it's yep. kind of weird, I guess, that they've only been there for three months when what happened to me happened a whole year before. Yep. But I mean, I just, I just thought, I guess that's them. And, you know, kind of moved on with my yep. life yep. until, you know, there was rumblings of, uh, of them being tortured for, for a confession. Yep. And yeah, like I, I, I didn't really realize there was a group of people that were advocating on their behalf until yep. I found that uh, justice group. Yes. For about a year ago. Yep. That was um, justice for those two Burmese yep. um, migrant workers. Yeah. Um, and yeah, people in that group know these young men personally, and yes, I think that's when it really hit home that they're actually they got to be innocent. Yep. And so I, it's really been bothering me. And yes. I just feel like that's why it's so important. That's why I want to share my story with yes. you or for with anyone who will listen. Yes. Because yes. yeah, it's they're still locked up in prison for yep. something that I, I feel we all know they didn't do so. Yes. But in fact, yeah. um, I, I actually know uh, quite a lot about the uh, the DNA evidence, and um, mm. in fact, uh, the uh, the Thai police, well, in in the broader sense, the Thai police are renowned for planting evidence to convict people. Mm. They're also renowned for removing evidence that would uh, show that the uh, accused person is innocent. Uh, so mm -hmm. they. They introduce bogus evidence and they remove uh, real evidence uh, from crime scenes. Um, and <clears throat> initially, the Royal Thai Police said that Hannah had been raped. Then they said that she had not been raped. Then they said she had been raped. And basically, you can't trust anything the Royal Thai Police yeah. say. They, they were pointing at, at different people all the time. <clears throat> but the laboratory that um, produced the evidence that ultimately convicted them was... Um, uh, a, um, a laboratory that did not have the correct accreditation under what under a standard called ISO 17025. And, um, <clears throat> but uh, they produced a, a very shoddy document in court. And um, I had had a, um, I'd introduced uh, a British activist by the name of Andy Hall to mm -hmm. Jane Torpen, who's a Melbourne um, forensic scientist who's given evidence in over a hundred trials in Britain and Australia. And she's very highly respected. She's written four books. She's a, a, an absolute expert. Um, and she went to uh, Thailand uh, to help with the defense lawyers. And uh, they showed her this document that supposedly showed a 100% match. And she looked at it and the first thing she found was that there was no stamp or seal on the document to show that um, the tests had been conducted in accordance with ISO 17025. 
And she also said there's no statistical analysis. And given that we have a mixed semen sample, it's mm -hmm. absolutely, it, it, she, she said it was a complete joke. I've, had, I've met her a couple of times and uh, she said, it's ludicrous. You cannot say that you have a match unless you've done a statistical analysis where you've got a mixed mm -hmm. semen sample. And there are a number of other problems. There was no uh, chain of custody. And so it looks very much like um, the police completely concocted the evidence. Um, mm -hmm. I won't go into all the details, but it just looks like um, part of the normal uh, Thai procedure of blaming uh, f foreigners. They, they'll often scapegoat Burmese migrant workers or they will scapegoat mm -hmm. very poor Thais and the wealthy Thai criminals get off the hook. So mm -hmm. it's something I know a fair bit about, but I've got entire videos on that and I've got over 70 videos on this channel. So uh, that's something if people want to delve into it, it can be boring for a lot of people. But if people want to uh, delve into some of the science, they can look at some of my other videos. Um, but look, if you've enjoyed watching this video or perhaps not enjoyed it, but if you thought it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And um, uh, you can check out some of the other videos on this channel and look at some of the links in the description below. And um, uh, having said that, uh, we're about to sign off. Carla, was there anything else at all that you would like to, to add? Yeah, uh, I think that's all. Yeah, it's been pretty comprehensive. And as I said to Sam, it may be that um, after uh, we say goodbye, uh, Carla might think of something else or I might think of something else. So we might, we might have another chat in the future or I might include um, some other information in the description below or on another video. So um, keep a lookout for things. And if you haven't already seen Sam Venning's interview with me, uh, please check that, that out. There will be a, uh, a link below as well. So thank you once again, Carla, and congratulations on being a dead set heroine um, for, 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 for saving, saving, saving yourself. <laughs> no, you, well, the thing, and also for speaking out now, I mean, a lot of people just go on their way and unless mm -hmm. there are good people like you warning uh, the rest of us about what is happening on some of these unsavory places, mm -hmm. other people fall into the same trap. So um, thanks a lot for sh uh, so much for shining a very important light on a very dark island and on a very dark subject. Cheers. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye.